The same people who thought uh, inflation was uh, transitory a couple of years ago, I think they're going to be wrong uh, about inflation having peaked. It might have peaked in the short term, but we're going to see a continued wave higher. Uh, it's going to be tough. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and back with us today is our good friend Mario Ineco from the Mineco 64 YouTube channel. Mario, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, and thank you uh, for having me again, uh, Elijah. Uh, I did want to discuss the Fed's decision we saw yesterday, them raising a quarter point. This is what was expected, um, but we did see a rally in precious metals. Now we've kind of sold back here, but your perspective on how the markets took the Fed's decision yesterday. Yes, I was traveling back from Switzerland, so I was on the train uh, back home from Heathrow Airport, but I checked the prices and I saw that gold jumped above 1950 and I thought, uh, Jay Powell must have uh, made a, a dovish comment. Uh, the Fed, of course, raised rates as expected, 25 basis points. From what I've read and uh, heard people say is that uh, he was quite uh, relaxed about financial conditions. He didn't seem too concerned that the stock market would react uh, too strongly. Uh, and that's wh wh why I think uh, like this stock market went up like the, the S&P and the NASDAQ, bond prices went up, uh, uh, gold especially went up, silver went up a little bit. And then it continued this morning here, London time. Uh, gold went up to 1960, silver went up to like 2465, outperformed a lot. But then uh, once the US came in, everything reversed and now uh, the dollar is relatively strong. So. It's a little bit confusing, and I think it might it might be to do with the uh, jobless claims numbers that came out uh, this morning, U.S. time. It, it came out lower than expected, even though we're seeing a, a lot of other economic uh, news be very weak in, in the U.S. But uh, we also had uh, some uh, central bank meetings here in Europe today. The Bank of England raised rates by half a percent as expected and so did did the ecb now if we look at also what the other central banks in the world are doing uh if you can share kind of what they're doing for example where are you are in england and also the ecb and also there's an interesting story uh you talked about in denmark so if you could take us through those uh three central banks there yeah i'll go go through uh, the bank of england first uh they raised rates to four percent and uh from what they told uh, us through the press conference a after the decision is that they're going to kind of pause right now. And uh, even though our CPI is above 10%, they're going to pause and see how things go. And, and they also see uh, the economy not being as bad as, as uh, they thought maybe a month ago. And uh, it, it just shows to me that they're going to keep inflating the system because when you have a uh, CPI at 10%, a uh, 4% interest rate is not going to cut it. <laughs> They're predicting that uh, the CPI is going to be below 2% by 2024, which seems wishful thinking to me. The ECB, on the other hand, they haven't raised rates as much as the Fed nor the Bank of England. They, they, they've raised it uh, by uh, 50 basis points to two and a half. They said they're going to do another 50 basis points in March and then probably pause. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, they're preparing to probably uh, stop raising rates. And, and they, they all seem to have this wishful thinking that CPI will magically go down just because they raised rates a little bit. As for the uh, Central Bank of Denmark, most people might think that Denmark is part of the euro. But it's even though it's part of the European Union, Denmark uh, has its own currency, the Danish krona. And the central bank today decided to raise rates, but they didn't raise uh, rates as much as the ECB. They usually track the ECB and their new uh, uh, president or governor, whatever he's called, he said he doesn't want the, the corona as strong. He wants to weaken the currency because it's too strong. And I just think that's crazy that you'd want your own currency to be devalued. But that just goes to show how 
central banks think. And um, <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, to me, you know, why, why would you want the people of your country to have a, a currency that uh, doesn't hold its value? So it seems like at least in the U.S. and um, also around the world, I mean, we're seeing these tendencies to the for the central banks to kind of slow uh, the rate of increase, it seems like. So it seems like a lot of them are thinking that inflation is under control, but we're still very high. Uh, if you look at the inflation numbers, and that's the official numbers, which are probably an underestimate. So what does this mean for you know the average person out there, the people viewing um what is it going to look like going forward for the next couple of years? Yeah, I, I think you need to go back to the 1960s because that that's when we had the last big wave of inflation. And, and I think uh, inflation comes in waves and uh, it's not going to go away in two, three years. So for the average person, it's going to things are going to get tougher. The uh, the pound or the dollar or the euro in your pocket are not going to be buying as much and they don't buy as much now already. And in a few years time, it's going to be the, it's going to get even worse, unfortunately. And uh, it's going to hurt, especially the uh, elderly, uh, you know, people on fixed incomes, retired people. It's going to hurt a lot of the uh, low income people as well. And that's why we're seeing a, a lot of people here, a, a lot of strikes in the UK because People at the bottom of the economic ladder, they're feeling it. So it's not going to get better. And I think it's uh, just this, the same people who thought uh, inflation was uh, transitory a couple of years ago. I think they're going to be wrong uh, about inflation having peaked. It might have peaked in the short term, but we're going to see a continued wave higher, I, I think. And it's not going to. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, I think people need to uh, be aware of it. I, I can't tell people exactly what to do, but uh, you just need to use your common common sense, uh, tighten your belts, uh, you know, and uh, maybe buy a little bit of gold and silver on the side to to keep uh, to keep your uh, savings from getting debased. For example, uh, prior to the turnaround today. The price of gold in, in British pounds went up to almost 1,600 pounds, which is a record all-time high. So I, I think that's going to continue going forward. And uh, I think uh, when when you see these uh, swings intraday, uh, it's always a good uh, good time to probably load up on a little bit. Today, for example, I went out into town and I, I walked past a, a pawn shop here in the UK, and they usually never had silver out. And I went in and bought a few uh, silver eagles, actually, uh, about four of them they had in, in the window. I took them all. And the lady there said, oh, they're, they're selling really well. And she said, it's really unusual because it's something new. And I think people are waking up. It definitely does seem like there's a greater demand now for precious metals in the last few years. I did want to ask you about kind of on this theme of inflation, you recently did a video on financial repression and how it's going to dispossess the masses. What is financial repression? How does it tie into inflation and what is its effect on people? Well, basically is it's the central bank and the government uh, stealing from the public because they, they they inflate the currency, let's say at ten percent, and uh, and they only give um, savers three four percent at the most in interest. So if you keep your uh, savings in that currency, you're going to lose out. <laughs> and they do that uh, in order to make uh, their debt because the bankers and the governments they have huge debts to make it look uh, worth less. And uh, the people who suffer, of course, are people holding the bag, people who hold uh, the, the savings and also workers, of course, get, because they're, they're, they don't have a choice in which currency they, they're paid in. They can't tell uh, the company that employs them or the government that employs them if they're in the public sector that they want to be paid in uh, silver or gold or maybe a, a stronger currency. So. Uh, that's what financial repression is. Usually in uh, a free market, I would say, if uh, there is some inflation, let's say 1% one, 1 a year, you, you'll probably get 2 or 3% in, for your savings. So you have a real rate of return. But with uh, 
the currency being debased as much as it is, and you're only getting like uh, one or two percent, maybe a little more. Uh, that that savings is uh, debased, and that's what financial repression is. And uh, it's been done, uh, tried, well, not tried, but they they did this in the 50s and 60s in the UK because of all the, uh, as a result of the the war, World War II, the UK had a lot of debt, and they instituted uh, capital controls as well. I think they did a little bit in the US in the late 40s after the war. They put yield curve control. You see what the Japanese are doing to is financial repression because CPI in Japan is almost 4% and you get almost nothing uh, on your savings in, in yen. I mean, you look at countries like uh, Brazil and Russia, some of the what they call the second rate countries, they actually have quite high interest rates way above the rate of inflation because they're not part of the uh, club, the Western club. So their currencies need to be defended. So, uh, yeah, that, that's how it should be. And uh, it's interesting that the Brazilian real uh, last year outperformed the dollar. It seems like that there is this rush to the dollar right now, which is a bit interesting how we're seeing inflation, but we're also seeing the value of the dollar with respect to other currencies increase. But I know last time we had you on, it, you said that that is going to be reversing. When do you see this reversal and what kind of impact will it have to people for people holding dollars? Well, we're already seeing uh, quite a reversal since uh the end of last year, the dollar index was, I think, got up to 115. I'm not sure exactly where we're now. I think we got even to below 102 recently. But for uh, people who hold dollars to, who depend on dollars, I, I think things are just going to get a little more expensive because uh, a lot of commodities and uh, a lot of trade is still done done in dollars. So if the dollar becomes worth less, it means you you'll be able to you're going to be getting less commodities. But uh, I think in the end of the day, it's not just the dollar that's going to lose a lot of purchasing power. It's all the currencies. Uh, like today, we got within a hundred dollars of the all-time high in gold. We made a new all-time high in British pounds. We we're very near the all-time high in Japanese yen. So I think people should focus more. Uh, on their currency, uh, be it the dollar, the pound, the euro, the yen versus gold, because in the end of the day, uh, all fiat currencies are going to sink. Some are going to sink a little faster, of course, but eventually they will all sink towards uh, worthlessness, I think. And when it comes to financial repression, it seems like this inflation is possibly done by design, right? Because it helps the government um, and it helps be able to devalue the debt that the government has. And it seems like, well, I mean, that's the effect of it. At least we can't know people's intentions, but it seems like that's always the effect of it. And that has to be the end game because the Fed can't raise rates too much more because the government can't uh, afford that rate of interest on the debt. Yeah, I think they're trying. They're playing a losing, um, losing game. Uh, they they will keep inflating because, as you said, um, they can't raise rates too too far, or else everything implodes. They they're gonna try hard to keep it going, and uh, yeah, like uh, the Bank of England governor today, uh, he blamed every everyone and everything but the Bank of England for the inflation. He's still using the uh, Brexit excuse. He's using COVID. He's using the war and the Ukraine excuse. And he never talks about the fact that uh, they printed like a, a trillion pounds in the last 15 years, which is like half of the GDP of this country for the loss of purchasing power of the currency. So yeah, they, they will always blame every everyone, and um, they'll blame even like uh, people asking for pay rises. They'll they'll blame the the unions for inflation, even though we know um, there's a famous banker in the 19th century, Felix Sommery. He said that um, inflation without government is impossible because it's a government and and, and uh, the state through its central bank that create inflation. So in a world, let's say, uh, where you barter things value for value, you can't have inflation. But when when you have a currency and, and uh, 
government and the central bank take over that currency and make it a fiat currency, they can inflate at will. So, yeah, they will always blame uh, someone else. And uh, most people don't understand that. They think that inflation is actually prices rising. They don't realize that it's the uh, issuance, over issuance of currency that has created that. It is the over issuance of currency. And that's why, like, as you mentioned, holding precious metals is so important because and as so many people have mentioned before, you are becoming your own central bank. You're moving your funds outside of this system of a currency supply that can be controlled, you know, at will by unelected officials and moving your funds into something that can't be controlled. I mean, you know, you can only mine. It takes effort to mine metal out of the ground. So it's a store of wealth that really represents human labor, right? Of people taking it out of the ground using human effort to refine it and all of that so can you speak to that how it's so important to become your own central bank take control again of your wealth instead of just having it be in the hands of unelected officials yeah i um i learned about that through uh jim sinclair many years ago in the early 2000s he, he wrote a book called a pocket book of gold um and uh he said you need to be your own central bank. And the other thing it does, it uh, it cuts out the middleman um, or counterparty risk. For example, when you leave uh, your savings in the bank, they'll lend that many times over and give you a tiny uh, amount of interest. Like, for example, right now, I, I do have to keep some fiat savings for tax reasons to pay taxes, but they're only giving me like 0.65% while the Bank of England rate is at 4%. So yeah, um, I try to take uh, out, uh, convert uh, my savings in, in, into gold and silver as much as possible. The other thing, uh, yes, if you wanna finance these people, keep keep your, uh, your savings with them because they'll use that for their own benefit and they won't give you too much. Uh, benefit from it. Uh, yeah, so I agree with you. Being your own central bank is a great thing. Um, and uh, it makes you, yeah, it makes you even more uh, self-reliant and independent. Yeah, and it, it makes you immune then, right, from financial rep repression. That's right. It's just like uh, health-wise, if you stay fit, uh, you don't have to go and take uh, all the uh, nonsense that uh, they try to push push with you it's like natural immunity it's financial natural immunity fantastic well mario we really we really appreciate your time today if our viewers are interested in learning more where can they find you yes i'm on youtube at maneco 64 i'm also on twitter quite a bit and uh, i also post on uh, BitChute, rumble uh, steam and hive Fantastic. Mario, any last thoughts before we let you go? Yeah, just uh, keep plugging away. Don't uh, let them scare you and uh, keep stacking. And also, I, I think it's really important uh, if you do well as well to be nice to people, people who I think are going to have a tough time. And uh, yeah, I think that's really important, too. All right. Mario Aneko from Aneko 64 YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your time and God bless. You're welcome and uh, God bless Elijah.